Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys your complete guide to everything on protein. I'm going to be taking you guys through and telling you how much protein you need based off your age, activity levels, if you're going for body recomposition, burning fat, building muscle, if you're vegetarian, vegan. We're going to do a whole walkthrough on how to calculate your macros and adjust your protein based off of your needs, as well as I'm going to be sharing with you guys five ways to increase your protein and easy high protein recipes that you guys could incorporate on a day-to-day -day basis to help you reach your daily protein requirements. If you guys don't know me, I am Elizabeth with Elizabeth Ayler Fitness. I have my four-year degree in kinesiology, CSES, holistic nutritionist and GAPS practitioner. Make sure to subscribe below and go follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I post there daily tons of nutrition tips, training tips, and here I post three times a week everything on gut health, hormones, and I just want to create a community where everyone can learn, incorporate different things to help get them to their best self when it comes to health, vitality, and reaching your goals. So make sure to subscribe, grab your pen and paper. I got a lot of information coming at you today and let's dive right into it. Before we dive into the calculations and recipes, I want to first start off by talking about what protein does the role in the body and the importance of it based off of our goals. So one huge thing I have my clients do when we start working together is I have them track their macros for a few days. And what I see trend wise is they tend to fall very low on their protein, lower fat, and higher carbs. It's kind of like our standard American diet. But what happens is protein has such a major role in the body, and if we're going towards body recomposition, which is the building the muscle, losing the fat, or building muscle in general, or if we're just going because we have a stress in life and we're trying to heal from a surgery or an injury, our body needs a certain amount of protein in order to rebuild, repair and get you those results. Protein also has many different functions in the body and I'm going to break it down for you right now. Let's start off by talking about in terms of building muscle. When you go to the gym, your body is, we're going to the gym, we're lifting heavy. If you're trying to build muscle, you're training hard so you have the time under tension in the muscle, you're breaking down the muscle fibers and in order for them to rebuild and repair, you need enough protein, which is all of the amino acids, to help rebuild that muscle so it grows back bigger and stronger. So if you're trying to build muscle, getting enough protein is essential. If you're going toward fat loss, this is the cool one, guys. So when you're going toward fat loss, protein plays a major role in your satiety, okay? So protein actually regulates these two hormones. It regulates your CCK, which is your hormone for satiety. And if you're on fat loss and we're having enough protein, we're getting the increase of protein, that's gonna increase your CCK, which is gonna be your satiety hormones that you feel full and don't get cravings all the time. Also, what it does is when you're on fat loss, it's the ghrelin. Your ghrelin hormone, which is your hunger hormone, by having enough protein, lowers your ghrelin. That means you feel fuller longer, more satiated at your meals. So if you're on a fat loss phase, making sure you're getting adequate protein for your body, your needs, that we're gonna dive into calculations in a second and how to increase your protein, but getting adequate amounts on that fat loss are very important. They're gonna help stabilize blood sugar levels. Protein has a 20% thermic thermogenic effects, so you're burning more. It's gonna help with muscle repair, keeping your lean muscle on your cut. Since we are on a cannabolic state, you wanna make sure plenty of protein so that you don't lose additional muscle on your fat loss, so we keep the metabolism up. And then, the other way we look at protein is if we're under stress. Stress comes in many different forms. You could have undergone a surgery. You could have something going on in your family and it's more of a mental stress going on. So any type of, or even it could be a, gosh, like you got burns or you had a severe injury done. And those also, we need enough protein 
for the recovery and our demands based off of all these different things, whether it be our age, if we're going for fat loss, building muscle, or if we have stressors or injury, our range of our protein levels shifts based off of the stress. And we're gonna dive into the calculations in a second and how to adjust those, but I do wanna hit one more thing, and it's age. As we get older, our body has something called hydrochloric acid, okay? HCL, it's our stomach acid. This is what denatures protein. This is what kills off bad bacteria in the gut. This, as we get older, is something that tends to go down. So as we get older, adding things in, like a Bragg's apple cider vinegar, Bragg's is my favorite brand, but adding in apple cider vinegar diluted before a meal will help increase stomach acid as we age to where we're able to absorb, assimilate, and break down the nutrients, everything in the protein. So age is additional factor um, that can go into protein. So. So now that we talked about the role of protein when it comes to building muscle, if you're going through injuries, if we're getting older, or if we're trying to lose fat and go for body recomposition, now I want to take you guys through all of the all of bleh, all of the calculations. So go grab your pen and paper, and we are gonna dive right into how to calculate the protein based off of your goals and switch it up and change it based off of if you got stress going on, if you have your age, if we're vegetarian, vegan, before we dive into those recipes and how to increase your protein. Now we're gonna calculate your protein. So go grab your pen. So I want you to start off by putting your body weight in pounds and divide it by 2.2, because we're taking the pounds and converting it to kilograms. So. My example, I'm taking a 150 pound person, dividing that by 2.2 to give me 68.2 kilograms, okay? So that is your first step. You're taking your, your body weight in pounds, dividing it by 2.2 to give you the kilograms of your weight. From there, you've got to figure out what part of this you are. I'm just going to go with an average person right now looking to build muscle, have a little bit of body recomposition, and reach their goals. So I'm just going to take an average of 1.2 for my protein. Okay, so we did our first calculation. We found our kilograms. Now, we're going to take our kilogram weight that you have, multiply it by whatever range you are. I told you I'm going for just building muscle, overall health, I'm picking 1.4. So I'm doing 68.2, multiplying it by 1.4, that gives me 95 grams of protein per day. That is my protein goal to hit for the day. And then in terms of your carbs and your protein, based off of the calories to reach your goal, if you're in fat loss, whatever it is, you wanna fill the rest of those calories in with your carbs and your protein. So I'm gonna be aiming for the 95 grams on a minimum per day, and then filling the rest in with carbs and fat. I'm not gonna to dive too crazy into the carbs and fat, but if you guys are looking for a good food tracker app, the one that I use is super easy. You put all your macros in there, it calculates your steps, everything and i will put it below for you guys so if you're looking for a good nutrition tracker to track your progress your macros and everything in that is a great one and like i said based off of your goals guys put your carbs your fats in there and never fall too low on those fats only because you need healthy fats from omega-3s going for our hormones our overall anti-inflammatory and just in general to absorb your fat soluble vitamins so that your body functions and if you guys haven't checked out my video i have a whole one on do calories matter for fat loss i will link that below it's my take on calories versus optimizing your diet what to eat for fat loss Okay, so we went through how to calculate your protein, how to adjust it based off of your goals, 
and then you fill the rest in with your carbs and your fats. Now, what I wanna talk about is my five ways to increase your protein, both plant-based and animal-based sources, and easy recipes on things that you can do on a daily basis to incorporate these in, to help balance your hormones, to help have the gut support, and hit your daily protein requirement to go for body recomposition, building muscle, losing fat, recovering from illnesses, and anti-aging with that overall bone support and muscle. So now that we went through how much protein you need, how to calculate your protein, now I wanna dive into five ways to boost your daily protein, both vegan and vegetarian, and easy recipes for each one. So we're gonna start off. My first way to boost your daily protein is going to be bone broth. Cook with bone broth. Add this to stir fries. Cook your grains in bone broth. You could do so much with this, and here's why. So, bone broth is very high in proline, glycine, all of these amino acids. They help heal the lining of the gut. They're good for our joints, our tendons, great as we age. Our body is one third collagen. It's in our joints, hair, skin, nails, connective tissue, inner lining of our gut. And adding bone broth, simple to your stir fries or cooking your rice or your grains in it. You could even throw us in smoothies, guys, you don't even notice, like, or make soups out of this easy and you're going to get not only protein but you're going to get the collagen benefits from it as well one cup of bone broth 33 grams of protein the brands that i do is um i love bonafide provisions that's my number one brand it's in whole foods sprouts in the frozen department um this is Osio good bones they're online they're pretty good trying them right now decent they gel and that is the key I like to get them frozen because that is when they are fresh. If you're getting a box bone broth that's been sitting there, it's not gonna have that full benefit as if it was fresh, frozen, and ready to go. I have a whole recipe on, oh, it's incredible. I have a whole recipe that I'm gonna be putting below in the details for you guys, but it is a cauliflower, just, just wait for it, cauliflower, rice recipe cooked with bone broth. So it's a great addition and I will put all of the details below for you guys so you guys could check it out and give it a go. The second way to boost your protein is going to be replace. Replace your breakfast cereals, replace your um, processed carbs, your pastas with quinoa. So quinoa is a complete protein. If you're plant-based, vegetarian, vegan, whatever it is, it is a complete protein and it's great to have in your diet. And by doing substitutions, swapping out your breakfast cereal for quinoa, or even substituting your lunch, getting rid of that white flour and all the refined carbs and going more toward a quinoa and a whole food, that is a way to bump up your protein for the day. In just one cup of quinoa, you're getting eight grams of protein, my favorite brand is the company True Roots, T-R-U-R-O-O-T-S. They're all sprouted. So it's sprouted, easy for your body to just absorb the nutrients, easy on the gut. My favorite recipe that I wanna share with you guys is a banana nut breakfast cereal. What you're gonna do is you're gonna bring two quarters of a cup of your non-dairy milk of choice. You could do almond milk. I stay away from oat milk. I'm not a fan of it. Spikes insulin, but like an almond milk, a hemp milk, or a coconut milk. You're going to add one cup of your quinoa. You're going to do a little pinch of salt, some cinnamon, and bring that to a boil with around one tablespoon of a sweetener. You could do a honey. You can do um, coconut sugar, whatever you like. You're gonna bring that to a boil, cover it, cook the quinoa for around 30, 35 minutes until fluffy. And then what you're gonna do is separate that into, it depends on how much you wanna eat. 
to separate it anywhere from two to four bowls. This makes around four servings. And top that off with some cinnamon. You ready for it? Some pecans, like a, a third of a cup chopped pecans. You can even do hemp seeds and sliced bananas. And this is incredible. You could serve it with a side of your eggs, whatever you're doing. And this is a great way to just bump up the protein at your breakfast meal, take something lower sugar that's gonna be healthy and get you to reach those goals in terms of body recomposition. My third way to increase your protein and my all time favorite recipe, you have to try it, is going to be to boost your meals with different nuts and seeds. Specifically, my favorites are going to be hemp seeds. I love sesame seeds, also sesame tahini. Um, walnuts are great. These are gonna be high in protein. What I like to do is I like to take things like the hemp seeds, the sesame seeds, the pumpkin seeds, and throw them into salads, pestos, smoothies. You could throw them on top of chia puddings into your Greek yogurt with some berries to give it the extra crunch, which just makes your food taste better, as well as to boost your protein. And because nuts and seeds are very high in magnesium and all of your different minerals, you're gonna get that health benefit on top of the boost of protein. So magnesium, potassium, omega-3s, because hemp seeds are so high in omega-3, so anti-inflammatory. My favorite brands that I do, I love Nutiva. I always go for organic, and I do the hemp hearts. You want them unshelled. This brand I love too, but what I like is they have um, different toasted ones. So these are hemp seeds. They have a Himalayan salt toasted one, and just different fun varieties that don't have a lot of, let's just say, a lot of stuff added in there that aren't so good for us. So. I want to take you guys and share with you my favorite salad dressing, okay? So grab your pen. You could do this recipe with either sesame tahini or hemp seeds, but we're going to take you through how to do it with sesame tahini, okay? So what you're going to do is you are going to get a half of a cup of raw sesame tahini. This is very high in calcium, protein, so good for you. Put it into your mixing bowl. On top of that, you are gonna mince one clove of garlic, add a quarter cup of water, a pinch of Redmond's Real Salt. I will put, that's the best salt by the way, guys. I'll put free 10% um, off if you wanna use it. I add it to all my meals. It has all your trace minerals in it. As well as you want to do a, um, you wanna do a good squeeze of fresh lemon juice. You're gonna take your fork, mix all of that together, and then take some fresh dill, remove the stems, chop it up, and mix it in. And this is called a lemon tahini dill dressing. You could use this on salads. You could dip your vegetables in it for the extra protein. You could even take this and make like a falafel if you're um, like vegetarian or vegan and you use lentils. You can make like a falafel and you could pour this on top of it. I save it in the fridge in an airtight container or mason jar and it lasts for around five days. And I will put all of the full recipes guys with the amounts all below in the descriptions for you if you wanna try them out. My fourth way to increase your protein and another delicious recipe is gonna be boosting your meals with collagen. So specifically, I'm gonna talk about this collagen and why and the health benefits of it, but getting an unflavored collagen, collagen, just like we talked about with bone broth, is rich in proline, glycine, as well as different types. This one has all five types of collagen fibers so that we're hitting our hair, skin, nails, joints, cartilage, connective tissue. It has the full amino acid profile and at the same time, there's no flavor. So having a collagen powder and being able to just throw a scoop of this, you know, one scoop into your coffee, your tea, your oatmeal, your yogurt, baked goods, if you make recipes, if you make homemade bars, you could throw this in there. You could even throw this in water if you get the unflavored one. And 
You don't taste it, yet you are boosting your protein. What I like about this collagen specifically is it has something called the Dermaville complex, okay? If you guys have seen any of my videos on gut health, how I heal my gut from SIBO, I will put all of that below, but I had severe digestive issues. I had severe eczema, rosacea all over my face, my body, and growing up, I would have to use steroid creams, and I truly believe everything starts in the gut. So with my diet, yes, I get protein throughout the day, but adding in a collagen that specifically has all five types of collagen fiber so that we're hitting all of the joints, hair, skin, nails, the training aspect, the bone health, especially as we age. This is really important because our body slows down in the production of collagen, one to two percent a year. But also, type two collagen fibers helps with the inner lining of the gut. That's where our immune system is. So this has that gut benefit, gut healing benefit as well. And the Dermaville complex, if you've ever heard you need vitamin C to help with the absorption of the collagen, the Dermaville complex in here has a vitamin C blend. It's, it basically helps with the absorption of the collagen, so you're getting the most out of your collagen supplement, and it also helps with the elastin, so the glue that holds everything together with our joints. So, collagen, the one that I use, I will put free shipping below in the link. I like to do the, I keep two different ones on hand. I keep the unflavored one, so I could throw this, like I said, into smoothies, um, your yogurt, your chia puddings, your pestos, baked goods, since there is no flavor. But also, my other two favorite ones are the chocolate and the salted caramel, and I'll put those below. And I'm gonna share with you guys my favorite way to boost your coffee and make a delicious gut-friendly latte using your collagen, okay? So what you're gonna need is you are going to need eight ounces of your coffee, okay? You're gonna need one scoop of either the salted caramel or the chocolate. I say, I say chocolate, I'm a chocolate girl. Collagen, that I'll put below. You're gonna need a dash of cinnamon as well as a teaspoon of coconut butter. And I say it's also called coconut manna from a company, Nutiva, if you wanna check that out. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your coffee, you're gonna take your collagen, you're gonna take your cinnamon as well as your coconut butter, and you're gonna blend that up until it's frothy. And then you're gonna take six ounces of your just warm non-dairy milk. You could do your almond milk. Your, I like to use a coconut milk. And you're gonna warm it up, throw it on the top, and you can even top it up with a little bit of like a coconut whipped cream and some cinnamon. And you have a healthy latte. You are throwing in collagen, so you're getting the gut healing, hair, skin, nail benefits, and you're boosting your protein intake up for the entire day, guys. So this is delicious. Let me know if you try it out. Again, I will put the full recipe below for you guys, as well as the collagen that I used and free shipping on it. My fifth way to bump up your protein intake, and I have a plant-based version of this and a non-plant-based, so I got you guys, is going to be, we're gonna start non-plant-based, is to boost your meals with beef sticks. And it's, hear me out. So the ones that I like to do have 20 grams of protein in them. Super clean, these ones are grass-fed, there's no crazy ingredients. No crazy sugars in there. What I like to do is I chop them up and I will throw them into salads. And I make this incredible cranberry salad that I'm gonna put the whole recipe below for you guys. And what I do is I keep these meat sticks on hand. My favorite is the original Smokehouse. This is gonna have that extra protein factor. You could chop it up onto your salads. Um, and then put your tahini dressing that we talked about earlier on top of it for a delicious way to bump up your protein. You don't have to cook, it's easy, and it's just simple, delicious, and a great way to boost it. And I will put free shipping on these below. This is, like I said, the favorite one that I do, no nitrates, no MSG, no, you know the word that I ain't gonna throw out here so I don't get in trouble, but that word, it ain't it.
And if you are plant-based and you're looking for an alternative because you don't do the meat stick, I got you covered. So I've been getting asked this question all the time is, Elizabeth, what is a good bar? And I'm not a fan of protein bars because they have so much sugar added into them, especially plant-based ones. They're either say keto and gluten free and have a ton of sugar alcohols and things to aggravate your gut, cause gas, bloating, or just spike your insulin, which is our fat storing hormone, or it's just straight fruit with not enough protein and not getting your full amino acid profile. So I am so excited because First Form just launched their new vegan protein bars and they're actually, they're approved by me. They're approved by me. They're gut friendly. You are getting 15 grams of protein. My favorite is the chocolate brownie and the banana bread is phenomenal. And what you guys can do. So I'm not talking about go replace your meal with a bar. I'm talking about add it to your meal. I like to take the banana bread one or the chocolate fudge. I cut it up into 12 pieces and I put it in the fridge and it gets like a little delicious brownie bite. And if you're making a chia pudding or a smoothie bowl, or you have your yogurt with, you know, your hemp seeds and your blueberries on top, you could add some of these little brownie chunks to it to bump up your protein. This has like very little sugar. They use allulose in here to sweeten it. There's a whole whole foods blend in here and nothing, like I said, nothing to aggravate your gut. This is a simple, clean, they use a complete protein in here. So you're getting the sunflower seeds too. And they just, they don't mess up your gut. And they also have your vitamins, your minerals coming from like broccoli and all of your whole foods in there. So I will put these below. I wanted to share them with you just because I've been asked getting asked the question, you know, what can I do if I am plant-based since a lot of plant-based people I feel tend to go towards soy and things that aggravate the digestive system. So I like to stick toward more whole foods like I talked about today, quinoa and different things that are just easier. And if you guys have not checked out my video yet, I did one last week. I will put it below for you guys. And it's on my top five unique protein sources that I consume every single week, the health benefits, everything on them. And if you would like me to do a part two to that, let me know below. I do want to mention before, before I move forward on this is I want to mention that wherever you are on your goals, guys, it doesn't just come down to just calories in, calories out. It comes down to getting enough sleep, optimizing your stress, your recovery, and your diet. Look at it as a lifestyle change. Start with one thing, swap out your breakfast, you know, try changing up your salad dressing, try some of these different changes and swaps to see if you're able to, you know, just make more whole food shifts with your diet and get more coming from your different macronutrients. Um, like I talked about, you know, egg yolks, all of that have health benefits. As you can see with everything that I talk about, I'm not just saying, you know, eat egg whites to boost up your protein. I'm talking about adding things in that are actually going to benefit your health in terms of supporting your joints, supporting your gut, supporting your brain, your health, giving yourself vitamins and minerals. Um, I want to know guys, would you guys like me to do, like I said, let me know if you want me to do a part two for the protein. Let me know if you would like me to do a whole complete guide, but doing it for fats and talking you guys about top fat sources I use, how to incorporate them in your diet, what types of fats we should stay away from that cause more oxidative stress on your body. And let me know if you would like me to do that video below. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop your com. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop your comments below. I go through, I answer everything. If you are not subscribed, make sure to subscribe because I have every single Monday, we go live at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for an open Q&A. And then every Wednesday, I have a new follow along workout for you guys. Everything saved in my workout playlist. 
as well as every Sunday a new nutrition topic. And like I said, this week we have protein, and next week I got a new surprise for you. Maybe it's gut health. Maybe if enough of you guys want the fat one, I'll go hustle and grind and get you a whole fat one up on your complete guide to how to figure out your fat macros and where to get them. Thank you guys so much for joining in today and I hope you found this helpful. Um, I do wanna let you know that I am now accepting a few new clients. If you guys need help with gut nutrition, I put all of my contact information below. Send me over an email and I will be in contact and I would love to help you reach your goals. Until next time, I hope you guys have an incredible day. Sending so much love.